So we talked about credit cards and credit scores. So today we're going to talk about how we can pay for a higher education and what having a higher education does when we are earning money. Um, so it talks about here, as you dream about your future, what kind of job or career do you think you want? Probably it will change your mind several times before deciding. One decision that will affect the kind of job you have now and how much you earn is whether you go to college. So lots of people, um, some people don't go to college. They work in, as a trade um, or some kind of a service. Other people do go to college and, and some c certain um, careers you do have to have a college degree, but not all. Um, college costs a, can vary greatly depending on the type of school. If you're going to a public or a private college, community college, university, or trade school, several ways to help pay for college. So savings. Lots of parents will start a savings account for college when their children are small. The children can also start saving early, putting money away um, from their allowance or cash from gifts into their savings account. We talked about that on Monday. There are many types of college savings account. Some are offered by local banks or government agencies. Other are private through insurance or investment companies. There, uh, so you can pay for college with your savings account. There are grants and scholarships. So a grant or a scholarship is a little bit different than a savings. Grants and scholarships are available from many different sources. Federal government provides Pell Grants based on financial need, cost to attend school, and the status as a full-time or a part-time student. So full-time, I believe, is considered 12 hours, um, and part-time is less than 12 hours. Other grants or scholarships may be available from the college itself or from alumni or community groups. Many are available for students with special talents such as sports or music. Others are given for high grades. Others may be based on financial need. Unlike student loans, grants and scholarships, here's the key, do not have to be repaid. So grants and scholarships are monies that you earn through different things um, so that you can pay for school. You do not have to pay them back. They're like a gift. Student loans, however, on the other hand, are like other kinds of borrowing, they must be paid back. That's important. With interest, remember we talked about interest is the money as an extra fee for when you pay back money you borrow. Uh, like a loan, it is important to shop around low interest and in other terms, right? So if you have lower interest, you're paying a lower extra money fee for the money you borrowed. Work study, once you're in school, Many colleges offer work-study jobs. These jobs can give you experience in a specific field that you're interested in, and they may be on campus or at private companies. At the same time, the money you earn helps you pay your costs. So if you are wanting to be an engineer, maybe you go get a work-study job at an engineering firm. So you are earning money because you're working there. However, um, it's not going to be like a whole, whole lot, but you can use that money towards your school. What factors can earn you a grant or scholarships to help pay for college? Well, let's we go back and we look up here. It says financial needs. It says um, special skills and grades. So right here, special talent. Oh, that is not a highlighter. I apologize. I thought that was. Let me choose the actual highlighter. Um, and we will mark that information. So right here, um, special talents, sports and music, high grades, financial need. So we can write that here. So we can say special skills, financial need. grades. It's very important once you get to high school and your grades are very, very competitive. Explain the difference between taking out a student loan and paying with savings, work studies, and other options. So here's the biggest thing. With a student loan, you have to pay it back with interest. So we talked about interest the other day. 
So if you pay, if you borrow five thousand dollars to go to school, well, you got to pay back that five thousand dollars and then some, because there there's a fee for borrowing the money. If you have a savings, you can pay as you go. Okay. Or work study, same thing. Assume you are ready for college. You plan to go to a local college while living at home. The annual cost for tuition fees and books, oh my goodness, this is a lot of money, $14,500. Assume you qualify for a Pell Grant of $5,500 and a scholarship of $1,500. Those are very good. You do not have to pay them back. If the rest of your costs come from your savings, how much savings do you need to pay for your first year? So we need to figure out First of all, for your Pell Grant and your scholarship, okay, so 5500 plus 1500 that's $7,000 that you have towards your tuition that you do not have to pay back. So we're going to say 14500 minus 7000 is still a lot of money, $7,500. Hundred dollars, but that's way less than paying fourteen five hundred. If the fees and tuition increase by four percent each year, how much money will you need for four years of college? Round to a whole dollar. So what we need to do is we have to find the interest for each year and add it in. So we can say fourteen thousand five hundred times. If we take four percent. 1, 2 times 0 0.04, 0, 0, 20, carry the 2, that's 8, carry the 1, that's 5, 1, 2, 1, 2. So it's going to go up $580. So our first year, we know was $14,500. Our second year is going to be $14,500 plus this $580. We need to add that in. Eight zero carry the one five fifteen thousand eighty dollars. So then to find the third year, we're gonna have to take that, so and that's gonna go up by four percent. Thirty two twenty six one two. So now it's going up by six hundred and three dollars and twenty cents. So we're gonna add. Fifteen eighty to that zero two three eight six five one. So now we're up to fifteen thousand six hundred eighty three dollars and twenty cents. And then it's going to go up again by four percent. So zero, that's an eight. 12 carry the 1, 25 carry the 2, 26 carry the 2, 22 carry the 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. So now it's gone up $626, call it 53 cents. So we were at 15, 6, 83, 20, plus 6, 26, call it 53. And when we add that, um, it said to the nearest whole dollar. We'll do that in just a minute. So 3 and 7, 9, 10, 13, 6. So we'll call it our fourth year. I forgot to round the third to a whole dollar. We'll do that in a minute. 16, call it 310. So that's a lot of money each year. And then it says... Each year's calculation, we got to add all the years. So if we add all these together, we get 60, oh, I'm so sorry, 61,573 dollars. That is a lot of money for school. So scholarships, Pell Grants, any kind of money you can get that you don't have to pay back is going to be very beneficial. <laughs> Assume you work 12 hours a week through a work study and you earn $7.50 an hour. How much would you earn each week? Well, if we make $7.50 an hour, we work 12 hours a week. If we multiply that 
we get $90 a week that we make. How much would you earn for two semesters of 16 weeks each? So we're going to have to say 16 times 2, that's 32 weeks if we make $90 a week for 32 weeks. That's going to be $2,880. If you work 12 hours during the summer and you earn $9.50 an hour for a 40-hour work week, how much would you earn during the summer? So now we're going to say $9.50 for 12 weeks at $40 each week. So you're going to end up with, if I do 12 times... 40, so 950 times 480. In the summer, we would earn $4,560. And again, all of that is money that you want to put towards your savings so that you can pay for your next semester of school. The following table shows the median weekly earning for people with different levels of schooling. Complete the table by calculating the increase in weekly income for each additional level of education. Okay. So, we just need to subtract, okay? So, 638 minus 451, 7, I'm going to have to borrow, 1, 13 minus 5 is 8. So, the difference each week is $178 between no high school diploma and a high school diploma. I want you to pause me and I want you to figure out the rest of this table and then you can unpause me and check your work. Welcome back. Hopefully you came up with the following. eighty-one forty-nine, $285, $210, $288 to $402. That's a big difference over a week. What is the median increase in weekly income between a high school degree and a bachelor's degree? So we're going to high school degree, which is a graduate, so 638. A bachelor's degree is 1053. So we have four, one, 415. Now, in case you're not aware, a couple of things. Associate degree is a two-year college degree. Bachelor's degree is a four-year college degree. A master's is usually around six years, and a bachelor takes way more. Um, we are going to look at the rest of this tomorrow. So, hopefully, you feel pretty good about how you can maybe pay for college.